What prompted you to make this film? I, uh, <clears throat> I was living with my cult group in Iowa, and uh, I got an email um, from the woman who lived next door to my mother in upstate New York, Malone, New York, this little border town. And um, her name was Lee Vanderwill, and she told me that my mother had suddenly started speaking about her past in Germany and uh, that she had a beautiful house, terrazzo tiles, two-door style. She was talking about the house, you know, and this lady, lady, oh God, you ought to get it back. And she, we went on to talk about other things. And um, at the end of the conversation, I th it occurred to me, why not do a documentary about trying to get the house back? Mm -hmm. And then um, um, later, um, I was... Um, coming out of Transcendental Meditation, and that's what gave me the idea for the assigned claim. Mm -hmm. Anybody got a question? Yes. So. yes. Um, the credits mentioned that it had been shown to test audiences, and uh, were some of those First Nations, and if so, what was the general reaction? Uh, we did not have any test audiences that were First Nations. Um, that was um, theoretically possible, but not convenient. Um, the only thing I can say, though, is that the world premiere of the film was um, at a Native American festival, Red Nation Film Festival in Los Angeles. And um, my remark about that is that uh, the Native Americans... Um, discovered a white guy. They discovered me before the Jews. Mark, I was wondering where you got your information about Canada. We were part of the presentation, a bit of an add-on, and I understand that that's not your experience, but where did you get your information about Canada? Now, are you talking about the residential schools? Well, it came up in a few places in the film. But sure. Unfortunately, there was a break in the film um, at the uh, hair salon. Um, they uh, were joking, uh, Nathan Blindman and Clayton Graham were joking about the, uh, the hair and curlers. And then they grew dark as they remembered uh, what I at one point called a bad hair day um, with the government and they were forced. And the, uh, it was a, a diatribe against the church. The, Sapa Una, Sa Una, the Catholics and Protestants came in and, uh, and so forth and did a number on them. So <clears throat> I later was able to get a document, and unfortunately that wasn't in the film. Uh, I mean, it was in the film, but you didn't see it, um, where it said that the, um, it, was done in, it was a document by the director of the Indian Department for the Canadian government and uh, he was the medical off the chief medical officer. It's coming back to me. Um, <clears throat> it was a document published in 1923. Um, I think that's the right date. And it said that 20 of the schools that he inspected, 23% okay. of all the Indian children were found to be dead. And in one school, it was 76%. And so um, that those are huge numbers to me. And while I was making the film, I had contacted the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, they didn't get back to me, and I don't know since then whether they have come up with numbers, but uh, I heard that they were uh, very high numbers. If that speaks to at least part of your question. Is there something, though, that... Um, I did not make any um, fine-tuned distinctions between what happened to First Nations, say, in Canada and uh, Native Americans in America. And so um, if I have um, slandered the Canadians in some way or not slandered them enough, um, <clears throat> I'm, you know, open to that. Uh, and 
so I did not make, you know, in the, in the course of a film, there was only so much information I could make. I just did the brush strokes, the broad brush strokes. So there could be, say that again. Yeah, I'm getting a good grade for the slander, I guess, yeah. <laughs> He's a good analogist. <clears throat> I have some comments also. How much time do we have? Uh, we've got a bit more time. How much time? I mean, like in minutes? Uh, five minutes? Uh, about five minutes. Five minutes. There's something I'd like to add, if I could. Um, <clears throat> um, I wanted to uh, talk to um, whoever would listen. I have a bag, I call it my evidence bag, and um, I, I imagine putting on my uh, gloves so I don't disturb the evidence. And reviewing the points of the film, um, I remember, maybe it was Alan Alda uh, saying his thank you when he received an Academy Award. I could be wrong about who. He said, I love my wife, I love my family, I love my country, and I love God. And in the film, we realize that we have two uh, examples of counterfeit or forgery for God and country. The, um, our typical images of God uh, are counterfeit. And why? Because the indigenous has been erased. We also have another image, which is counterfeit. And it's the standard map of Canada that you see in any glove compartment or any high school um, classroom. And uh, in the, um, the better part of Judaism, um, I think Ju uh, Hitler tried to stop Judaism for the wrong reasons. But in the better part of Judaism, they have a, a tradition of reform, uh, re uh, restoring, healing, transforming. It's called tikkun olam. And I was thinking of something we could do. Um, I, uh, the, the film gave birth to a number of uh, teaching tools, uh, constellation of teaching tools, um, under the rubric of what I called uh, the most Jewish looking Jesus in history, uh, art exhibit. Um, <clears throat> I saw this, I saw us now, uh, where I am now, at step four of a six step operation. Step one are the typical images of Yeshua we see everywhere. Um, there was a cover story of Time Magazine in, I think, uh, September or March of 2008. Big number 10, the 10 top ideas in the world that are changing economy, politics, and the future of religion. And idea number 10 was re-Judaizing Jesus. But, um, <clears throat> and that idea, of course, was already picked up by Rembrandt. He used Jewish models, step two of this six-step process. Uh, step three, Mark Chagall painted Yeshua in a Jewish context, put on the phylacteries, the, the prayer straps, they're called tefillin in Hebrew. Phylacteries is the Greek word, and the straps on the arm. Um, <clears throat> I have a gallery that I started in the film and I've continued outside of the film, step four. To warm us up for step five, um, I have not yet announced, um, but one of these days I will, the most Jewish looking Jesus in history art exhibit, art contest, excuse me, art contest. And in the process of the artist looking into how to re jewify Yeshua and to re um, recover his indigenous roots, I thought that that would allow us to become more sympathetic to the analogy of what happened to Yeshua happened to the Indians. Jesus and the Son of God, two peas in a pod, is a verse from a rap song I was talking about. And so, re jewifying the image of Yeshua, uh, I wanted to redo the uh, Haudenosaunee map. And I imagine when I redid the Haudenosaunee map, if, can you see it from up there? Um, refuting the territorial claims of Canada and the United States. I thought of a new drunk test. Montreal falls within Haudenosaunee territory. A new drunk test for Montreal. Um, <clears throat> you tell us your name. Uh, my name is Pierre. How many fingers am I holding up, Pierre? Uh, you're holding up four fingers. What country do you live in, Pierre? I live in Canada. Eh, wrong. No, you don't live in Canada. You live in Haudenosaunee territory. Officer, I think this man has been drinking. And to bring this home, I have another, I have another teaching tool. And I'm, stay, I'm staying here in the hotel, and the hotel has a Gideon Bible. And I've developed a new dust jacket for all prayer books, all Bibles, hymnals and missiles, and it's a very nice dust jacket, except it says the verses, in this case, and the verses in this prayer book are printed on stolen paper. 
paper from trees and forests growing in America, the land stolen from the Native Americans. And for the fundamentalist version of it, I have an additional line, Satan is working through our prayer book. And we have the Haudenosaunee map, and I give my reasoning. And so now that we understand that uh, the indigenous has been removed, not just in terms of the language, appearance, religion, the Native Americans, but also their land, five, step five. Step six, you're talking to uh, the grandson of a cattle dealer. We have simple solutions. At least pay the Indians rent. So if there's any more time for questions, I'm not sure if there is, but. No, unfortunately we don't, but when you're on your way out, please vote. Welcome to the House. <laughs> uh, the House has maintained its uh, status quo and uh, is still there at 17 Fogelbergstrasse. By the way, I will be here uh, to talk to anyone as long as they want to talk to me. Uh, I got another, almost another hour, and I'd love to answer your questions. I have one question. Is there anybody here that's clergy? because I have a special interest in clergy. Um, any other one last question? I'd love to meet you, sir. Was machst du Any other quick questions? Do I pay rent? Yes, I do. And the minimum? I decided we should at least do the minimum. What is the minimum? A dollar a month. One dollar a month. Somebody said, but that's not the minimum. What about 50 cents? And I said, that's, you know, loose change. You could drop on the carpet. You could mess up your vacuum cleaner, please. A <laughs> dollar a month. Yeah. Did you get rent from your house? No, we, we did not. <laughs> uh, however, they gave me a film. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay.